Richard, whenever I think about the universe from when I've been a child, I have this, this feeling of, of just being swallowed up by this enormity beyond comprehension. And I, I really would like to begin to understand more about it, what we've learned from cosmology. And let's start with structure. Uh, the structure on the larger scales. How can we begin to understand this large-scale structure? Well, when Hubble looked out in different directions, he saw similar counts of galaxies in different directions, which meant he was giving the same observations regardless of what direction mm -hmm. he looked. So on very, very large scales, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. It's the same in all directions. But if we look at smaller scales, we see galaxies, we see structures in the universe like our own galaxy, we see groups of galaxies like the local group, we see large clusters of galaxies. And it's important um, how these uh, clusters of galaxies are connected. We see filaments of galaxies. We, we want mm -hmm. to know what the pattern of large scale structure looks like. Um, we think that the large scale structure that we see in the universe today was formed starting from small quantum fluctuations in the early universe, and that these have been amplified by the action of gravity over 13.7 billion years. So regions that were a little denser because gravity is working, they get denser still. And we're talking in the early universe on extremely small scales, microscopic, uh, not visible in, in terms yes, of our Yes, we're, we're talking perception. about these are the oldest things in the universe. These fluctuations were maybe laid down 10 to the minus 35 seconds after <laughs> right. the beginning. So uh, these are the oldest, these, these giant clusters of galaxies and filaments of galaxies and things that we see, walls of galaxies, are really a sort of fossil leftover from the random quantum fluctuations in the universe, maybe 10 to the minus 35 seconds after the beginning. Mm. That's a, it, it's an incomprehensible period of time. What happened during that period of time results in this enormity that we see today. Because the universe has expanded so much. Right. These microscopic right. small things have expanded to very large scales by the present, by the present day. Right, right. So how, how then can we look at this structure and, and determine uh, what the, uh, the generation of it was, uh, what, what the future may be? How, how can we begin to understand some of the rich detail of this structure? Well, let's look at a map. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is, a, this is a map of large scale structure. And um, the Earth is here. Mm. And so we measure the distances out to individual galaxies by how fast they're moving away from us. Each dot is a galaxy. Each dot is a galaxy. And so um, one of the things that people first discovered, this is the Great Wall of Galaxies seen by Geller and Hooker. This is the Coma Cluster, this uh, mm. large cluster in here. So we observed that clusters of galaxies were sort of connected by filamentary structure like this. There's large voids here. How, how far away is this? Well, this is about, uh, this scale here is about 1.37 billion light oh, years. Okay. So this okay. is the distances that we're talking about here. This great wall here is about 750 million light years long. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, one of the interesting questions about the Great Wall that uh, my graduate student Chang Bom Park did a big numerical simulation after the Great Wall was discovered and showed that our standard gravitational instability picture of gravity forming these structures was when the then popular cosmological model indeed able to explain very large structures like this. Um, this is the Sloan survey. This is a new survey that we've done. And this is uh, the Sloan Great Wall of Galaxies. Wow. It's the largest structure that we found in the universe so far. And Mario Urich and I measured this to be uh, 13, 1.37 billion light years in length. It has um, over 10,000 galaxies in it. It has many large clusters here in groups. And this is a structure that extends over a over an enormous distance. Um, the interesting thing is how these structures are connected in 3D. Mm. 
Um, there were two primary theories for how galaxies were clustered. We saw a cluster of galaxies. So one theory said the, the topology of large-scale structure, if you will, looked like meatballs and you know, <laughs> de high-density clusters in a low-density background and stuff just fell onto them, sort of hierarchical <laughs> clustering scheme. Um, another different view uh, was that uh, you could have um, uh, a Swiss cheese type topology, where you had big empty yeah. voids. We do see big empty voids, and uh, the the high density regions are one connected piece. Mm -hmm. So the difference between this is that in the meatball situation, <laughs> the high density regions are isolated from each other, right. and the low density region is in one connected piece. Yeah. In the Swiss cheese model, the voids are disconnected from each other, and the high density regions all right. are all in one connected all right. piece. Well, so um, um, uh, I and uh, Adrian Malad and Mark Dickinson wrote a paper where we said, well, neither one of these could be correct because in the standard picture of inflation, uh, the idea is that the structures are due to random quantum fluctuations in the early universe. And these are random, so the high density regions should look like the low density regions. If you change the random number generator yeah, sure. you were using to generate them, you change the high density regions yeah. into low density regions and vice versa. Like a positive and a negative on a photo. That's right. So, so the, the, the high density regions must be connected to each other uh -huh. in a similar way to how the low density regions uh -huh. are connected to each other, and a sponge is something that does that. Um, the marine sponge has all these water channels leading through it. It's in one connected piece, but the water channels go all the way through. This is what allows it to be nourished. Uh -huh. But if you were to take uh, concrete and pour it into those water channels yeah. and make it solid and then take acid and dissolve yeah. away the poor sponge, yeah. you'd be left with a concrete yeah. sponge. Right. So we found by doing 3D surveys that, and a number of them, ours and other groups have found that um, the uh, 3D structure is indeed sponge-like. And so this is an important prediction of inflation. All these great clusters are linked by walls and filaments like this, and the voids are linked to each other by tunnels, low-density tunnels. So the three-dimensional picture of this is like a giant sponge. So this being a snapshot of the way everything exists as we see it today, this of course goes back in time. Yes. If we then um, extrapolate forward into the future, dynamically, what happens? Well, the universe is a, has an accelerated expansion today. Right. It's expanding faster and faster. This is due to dark energy. Uh, dark energy has an energy density, but also a negative pressure. The pressure is uniform, so there's no forces. Uh, we don't notice the pressure in this room because it's uniform. But there's a negative gravitational effect due to this negative pressure, mm -hmm. an Einstein's theory, which causes a gravitational repulsion. So it's causing the universe to expand faster and faster. So um, if you sit here on this great wall, mm -hmm. then these galaxies are starting moving away from you faster and faster. And finally, um, you won't be able to see some subsequent events on these galaxies because they're expanding away so fast. The space between you and them is, is stretching so fast that the light beams, which are on their way to you, just never quite catch up to you. As fast as they go. <laughs> they're going at the speed of light, but the space between is stretching even faster. faster. So they never quite get to you. So you, you lose track of your uh, friends here. Going over the horizon, so to speak. It's like very much like the horizon of a black Black hole. They, mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you can still see them, but you don't see the subsequent events right. that occur. So, so this, uh, the the dense regions here, the clusters that are here, they're gravitationally bound. They'll stay gravitationally bound, but then you'll just lose track of your of your friends as they go <laughs> over the horizon, <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, eventually, the universe gets very lonely and 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 very thin in terms of density as it expands forever into the future. So when you hold in your hands, literally here, this enormity this, uh, of, of the universe, of the large-scale structure, when you step back, how does it make you feel? Well, the amazing thing is that this, which is the largest thing that we can see in the universe, this magnificent structure, 
uh, comes from a tiny quantum fluctuation in the very early universe when the universe was very tiny, maybe 10 to the minus 35 seconds after the beginning. So um, this is a structure that's going to go along for a long time. It's been around for, th it's been growing for 13.7 billion years. Um, uh, and yet it started off as something tiny at the very beginning of the universe. And it's, it's grown so large and magnificent yeah. over time.